Welcome back to chapter 8. So this is an example that is the first time that we see a hinge. We'll talk about why that matters. And we have an angled force that we need to make sure we're considering this idea of perpendicular when we're writing the torque term. All right, so example 9F. We want to find the tension in the rope. So that's one of the forces. And the X and Y components of the force from the hinge on the bar. So we have a lot of information just in the question that we're going to make sure we pull apart so we really understand what's going on here. But we have the real picture and we want to draw the force diagram next. So free body diagram. All right, let's look at the forces that we are kind of confident that we have. First of all, ropes always pull. And because we're drawing the free body diagram of the bar, we don't care about the fact that it's going to pull away from the wall. We care that it's pulling away from the bar at this 40 degree angle. So the tension here can be broken up into an, and I'll use the colors that we are used to for horizontal forces. We've been seeing X. So here's the tension in the X direction, which is going to be the tension times the cosine of 40 degrees. And we have the tension in the y direction. So the tension in the y direction is going to be the tension times the sine of 40 degrees. And I should have drawn it first, um, but the reason we knew where to put sine and cosine is because where the angle is located, cosine is for adjacent next to, sine is for opposite away from. And that's where this 40 degrees comes in. All right, what else do we have here? We know we have the force of gravity from the box that we have, this four kilogram box. So force of gravity of the box is mg, so four times 9.8, and that's 39.2 newtons. We also have the force of gravity of the bar itself. The bar has a mass of three kilograms. So we're going to have 3 times 9.8, and that's going to be 29.4 newtons. And let me clarify for us here that this is a vertical force, and that this is also a vertical force, up and down. All right. If we look at this force diagram, we should be able to tell right away that this can't possibly be the only forces acting. Otherwise, the whole bar would move to the right. This is where we get to the idea that the hinge is applying a force. It's not quite as, con it's not quite as simple as um, saying that it's a normal force because the hinge is more complicated than that. You can pull and push on a door, and that hinge is going to push or pull back in order to keep the door in place. In this particular situation, we can tell that that hinge is pulling or rather pushing on the bar to the left because, and I'm going to call it hinge force X. So the hinge has a force where there's going to be an X component and there's going to be a separate Y component and we will just call it HX and HY. You'll notice that we are asking for those components. We are not expecting any kind of angle to be indicated. We're just asking for those two pieces separately. And what's also worth noting is that right now, that Y component of the hinge could be up or down. That hinge could be preventing this bar from accidentally sliding up or accidentally sliding down. So we'll choose a direction, H, Y, and we'll put a question mark there. And the reason why we couldn't be sure is because there's already some up and down forces and we don't know which is needed in order to have everything balance out. All right, so that free body diagram, it may be worth double checking that you understand where everything came from, but now we move on to the torque equation or torque diagram. All right, so in the torque diagram, we make a list of what we have been doing this whole time. We draw the beam, so it's a horizontal beam or bar. We draw the axis. In this case, any time we have an, a hinge in a problem, always choose the hinge. Always choose 
hinge if given. None of the examples we've seen before so far in this chapter have had a hinge. We can choose our axis anywhere, but this is kind of decided for us that that is the axis we're considering here. All right, so the step three of our torque diagram is to draw the forces, and we only care about the forces that are away from the hinge. That means that HX and HY will not show up in this diagram. So if we start at the hinge and we go partway along, partway along we get to the force of gravity of the bar itself. Halfway along the bar is where that 29.4 newtons is acting. And if we continue on at the very end of the bar, we have the 39.2 newtons acting. Now, here's where things get really important if we understand the concepts that we've been learning in this chapter so far. It's not so difficult to understand. If we don't understand these, these topics, we will really struggle with this. So before I add in the tension, which absolutely matters, the next step has always been the distances. And this together, this idea of forces and distances, we have needed the idea of perpendicular to show up here. So the 29.4 newtons, that is a perpendicular distance of 1.6 meters divided by two because it's halfway along the bar. So 0 0.8 meters. And that 39.2 newtons is the full length of the bar, the 1.6 meters. Now, if we have only horizontal distances available to us because the bar itself is horizontal, then that means that in order to have this be a perpendicular idea for the torque, we only want the perpendicular part of the tension. So we want the tension in the y direction, the up and down part, so the perpendicular force, because we have a horizontal distance. It gets back to this understanding of what torque is really even trying to do. And then the last step in our torque diagram is the direction, clockwise and counterclockwise. So if we look at this hinge force, the rope is trying to pull the whole bar up and around, up and around in a clockwise direction. Whereas if we suddenly cut the rope, the bar would swing down and it would rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So what we're trying to do when we're deciding on direction is based on where the axis is, what would happen to the rotation if that were the only force each time that's what we're deciding on. And so we have our torque diagram completed so we can draw, we can write out our torque equation now, torque clockwise equals torques counterclockwise. And so here's where we get to this idea that we're looking for a perpendicular force times that whole distance away each time. And so I'm going to leave that there as a reminder. But in this case for clockwise, we have the y component of the tension. So the full tension times the sine of 40 degrees. And it is a full 1.6 meters away from where our hinge is. On the right side, we have two different terms. We have the 29.4 times 0 0.8. I'm not writing the units just because I'm running out of space. And the 39.2 times the 1.6. All right, so I'm going to do all of this in my calculator. 29.4 times 0.8. And then that total plus 39.2 times 1.6, that total together too. So on the right side, we get 86.24 Newton meters. And on the left side, if I do sine 40 degrees and 1.6 multiplied together in my calculator, I get 1.03. And then we still have the unknown, at this point, full tension. So we're dividing both sides by 1.03, divided by 1.03. And we get that the full tension, which is one of the things we're looking for, 
is going to be equal to 83.7 or 83.8 newtons, depending on how you actually rounded in your calculator. Either one of those is going to be perfectly fine, 83.7, 0 0.8, or 0 0.9. All right, so that is the tension in the rope. The full tension, this is not FTY, we already dealt with the idea of the Y component by having the sine 40 degrees show up. And now, in order to finish the problem, we need to be thinking about F net equaling zero, and that happens in two different directions. So F net in the X direction is equal to zero. If we look at our free body diagram, there are two total forces. So the x component of tension minus the hinge force in the x direction is equal to zero. So then we have 83.8 cosine 40 degrees is equal to the hinge force in the x direction. So then we get 64.1 or 64.2 newtons. Again, this is all rounding differences and not a big deal. That's the x component of the hinge force. And then for the y direction, we have f net y is equal to 0. And so using the arrow directions as we've drawn them, hy plus fty minus fg of the box minus fg of the bar, all of that equals zero. The pluses and minuses come from the same sign for the same direction and opposite sign for opposite direction. All right, I've got to skip some steps because I'm running out of space, but HY is going to be equal to the 39.2, because we've added that to both sides, plus the 29.4, because we've added that to both sides, minus the 83.8 sine 40 degrees for the y component of the tension. And so what we will get is a positive 14.7 newtons. And it is really important for us to note that if this came out negative, the only thing that would be a problem is that we would have had to draw it in the opposite direction. You'll remember that we asked ourselves, we weren't quite sure whether it should point up or down. A positive number in this case would indicate that the arrow is pointing in the direction we thought it did, and a negative sign would mean that it's pointing opposite the direction we thought it did. We don't have to redo anything, we just have to make note of the correct direction for the arrow. There's a couple of those situations that show up in the extra practice set with some commentary. So these three boxed answers are the end of the problem the tension, the x component of the hinge force, the y component of the hinge force. And um, it's our first chance to really make sure we think about this perpendicular idea because we've had to take a single component of something. But that will be true moving forward of the examples that we have left in the chapter. So I will see you in those next example videos.